How can you truly enjoy the meal unless you know the flavor? Ah, welcome back, ABL fans. This is Big Earl, your trusted voice in action baseball league analysis, coming at you with our third installment of Deep Dive 25. Strap in, because we're about to slice, dice, and dissect all the nuances of this great league. A sincere thank you to the Miami Herald's veteran beat writer for assembling a remarkably comprehensive narrative that penetrates the inner workings of the team. We appreciate your focus on classic journalism, always precise and detail-oriented. Okay. ABL fanatics, let's do this. Whether it's the Eastern powerhouses, the Central workhorses, or the Western wildcards, we're covering it all. Ah. Baseball aficionados, grab your shades and your scorecards because we're taking a panoramic view of the Miami Hurricanes, the NBC Eastern Division's tropical storm of opportunities and challenges. If you're one of those folks who can't get enough of the nitty-gritty, the ins and outs, the ups and downs of ABL baseball, then this deep dive is for you. It's like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You never know what treasure you're going to find. So, fix yourself a Café Con Leche. Let those ocean breezes soothe your soul, and let's untangle the complex narrative of a team that's as unpredictable as a South Florida weather forecast. Question 1. How does the owner's personality and negotiation style influence the team's culture and performance? The balanced philosophy of the Miami Hurricanes, a look inside the front office. Let's lay it up straight. Baseball aficionados, the Miami Hurricanes are a study in moderation, a team piloted by an owner and front office that know the value of a balanced checkbook and a harmonious clubhouse. Danny Leon, the Hurricanes' 56-year-old owner with 18 years of experience, epitomizes the term middle of the road in both negotiations and management style, but don't mistake that for lack of ambition. His goals are set, reach the playoffs, improve the team's on-base percentage, and secure key contracts. Echoing Leon's balanced approach, GM Daniel Baker brings a fiery edge, while field manager Seth Coe's tactical acumen ensures the team is as sharp on the diamond as they are fiscally responsible off it. All told, expect a season of measured moves and consistent performance from the Hurricanes, a team built not for flashy headlines, but for sustainable success. Question 2. What roles do the front office and coaches play in the team's success or struggles? Are they aligned with the owner's vision? The synchrony and dissonance of Miami Hurricanes leadership, a complex melody in baseball governance. In the Miami Hurricanes baseball opera, alignment between the conductor and the musicians, here, the owner, front office, and coaches is key to a harmonious performance. General Manager Daniel Baker, seasoned but still tagged and proven, could be either the fire that fuels the Hurricanes or the spark that burns them. His volatile temperament might disrupt owner Danny Leon's balanced approach. Field Manager Seth Coe, a tactician with an excellent reputation, serves as the ideal liaison between front office plans and on-field execution, aligning well with the owner's winning aspirations. The coaching staff, however, is a mixed bag, diverse in skills but varying in reputation, leaving us to question their alignment with Leon's goals. In essence, the Miami Hurricanes possess a medley of talents that could compose a baseball symphony, but only if their front office and coaching staff can find a way to harmonize with their owner's vision. Question 3. How does the team's financial health reflect in its performance? The fiscal scorecard of the Miami Hurricanes, a middle-of-the-road financial powerhouse aiming for the pennant. The Miami Hurricanes find themselves in a peculiar position, financially robust yet seemingly underachieving where it counts. Ranked 14th in league finances, with a payroll of $7.5 million under a $9.5 million budget, they've got fiscal leeway for potential mid-season course corrections. The cash cow in this equation? Over $5.5 million in season ticket revenue, a testament to a fan base that's bought into the promise. They've got the cash for trades and a budget surplus, but the real question lingers, can they translate this fiscal comfort into on-field victories and postseason triumphs? It's high time for the Hurricanes to parlay their financial stability into the one statistic that really matters, the win column. Question 4. How has fan interest evolved over time, and what does it mean for the team's revenue and player acquisitions? The pulse of the Miami Hurricanes fan base, a decade-long odyssey, and its fiscal implications. Charting the course of fan interest in the Miami Hurricanes from 1972 to 1981 reveals a fluctuating but resilient landscape. Peaking in the mid-90s during the 1970s, experiencing a slump in 77, and climbing back up in subsequent years, the interest level remains robust, hovering in the upper 80s as of 1981. 
The current season's metrics underscore this enthusiasm, an above-average market size, and a very good fan loyalty rating. With the ballpark filled to 90% capacity, the team enjoys stable revenue and the financial flexibility to make player acquisitions. Yet, a recent 30-day dip in fan interest by four points serves as a cautionary note, suggesting that sustaining this passionate engagement requires not just fiscal prudence but on-field excellence. With a solid foundation in fan support and finances, the Hurricanes are primed for success if they heed the wake-up call. Question 5. What is the current mood among the fan base, and how could it impact the team in the short term? The ebbing and flowing tide of Miami Hurricanes fan sentiment, a short-term forecast. The Miami Hurricanes are enjoying a loyal and engaged fan base, filling the stadium to a substantial 90% capacity and holding a high fan interest rating of 87. However, the recent 30-day dip of four points in fan interest casts a shadow of urgency over the franchise. This waning interest, though minor, could impact the team in several ways. It may push the front office into action for quick wins, potentially affect gate and merchandise revenue, and subtly influence the psychological state of the players. In essence, the Hurricanes are at a pivotal juncture. They have amassed considerable goodwill among their fans, but this minor blip signals the need for immediate, tangible success on the field. Failure to respond could risk turning a momentary downturn into a lasting slump. Question 6. How is the team faring in the league standings, and what factors are contributing to their performance? The Miami Hurricanes season thus far, a tale of missed chances and lingering potential. With a lukewarm 10-9 record and trailing the division leader by three games, the Miami Hurricanes find themselves at an inflection point early in the season. Despite a commendable 7-6 road record and a flawless 1-0 in one-run games, the team's mediocre 3-3 home standing and alarming minus 12-run differential point to underlying issues. What's more concerning is the lackluster performance against a relatively easy strength of schedule, clocking in at .421. The story here is one of squandered opportunities and defensive lapses. As veteran catcher Jorge Suarez succinctly puts it, we've been a little inconsistent, and we've got to fix that. As they gear up to face the Charlotte Colonels, the Hurricanes find themselves at a crossroads, teetering between realized potential and disappointing underachievement. Question 7. What are the team's odds of making the playoffs on a divisional and conference level? The Miami Hurricanes' playoff aspirations, slim odds, but a glimmer of hope. With a little over 10% of the season behind them, the Miami Hurricanes find themselves as statistical long shots for the playoffs, sporting identical 23.9% chances at both the divisional and conference levels. A modest 17.8% chance to capture the division title implies they're in the hunt but not leading the pack. And then there's the 1.2% possibility of finishing first, a figure more akin to a Hail Mary than a solid game plan. These numbers paint the Hurricanes as the scrappy underdogs, the kind that warm the hearts of sentimental fans but don't send chills down the spines of competitors. As the season marches on, the Hurricanes face an uphill battle to defy the odds and make their presence felt when autumn leaves and playoff dreams take center stage. Question 8. How do base runs and ELO ratings paint a picture of the team's true strengths and weaknesses? The Miami Hurricanes, a statistical paradox of grit and vulnerability. The Miami Hurricanes present a conundrum, a blend of heartening strengths and concerning weaknesses as revealed by base runs and ELO ratings. With an actual win percentage of 0.526, they defy a less flattering Pythagorean win percentage of 0.432 and an expected win percentage of 0.46, suggesting that they've managed to win games where the stats were stacked against them. Yet, a negative run differential of minus 12 casts a long shadow, echoing concerns about their long-term sustainability. On the ELO front, a current rating of 1,486.0 shows recent resilience, but a dip to 1,456.1 during the last 30 days hints at an underlying vulnerability. In sum, the Hurricanes are the epitome of baseball's capricious nature, capable of both tantalizing promise and perplexing underachievement, leaving fans to wonder which version will take the field as the season unfolds. Question 9. What does the team's war indicate about its most valuable players? The dual tale of the Miami Hurricanes' war, pitchers shine, hitters lag. The Miami Hurricanes, sporting a middling 10-9 record, show a tale of two cities when it comes to wins above replacement, war. With a total war of 3.73, they're neither spectacular nor dismal. The spotlight, however, shines brightly on their pitching staff, which boasts a pitcher war of 2.24. These arms are the linchpin of the team, doing the heavy lifting to keep Miami in contention. Contrast this with a batter war of just 1.49, and it's evident that the team's bats have been more whimper than bang. 
In short, while the Kings' mound work offers a glimmer of hope for a postseason push, their lackluster hitting could be the Achilles' heel that keeps them from October glory. Question 10. How have injuries impacted the team's performance and depth? The silent scourge, injuries crippling the Miami Hurricanes' depth and potential, lurking in the backdrop of the Miami Hurricanes season is a menacing health report, one that ranks them sixth in the league for injuries. With three players sidelined, accumulating 63 days on the disabled list, and a financial toll of $230,000, these injuries aren't just a footnote, they're a headline. This situation ripples through the roster, putting a strain on depth, and potentially exposing vulnerabilities in a long, grueling season. While the financial impact may not be seismic, it's still capital that could have been better allocated. These injuries, in concert with the precarious playoff odds, might just be the lurking variable that tilts the scales from mediocrity to outright disappointment. Question 11. What do the team's batting statistics reveal about its offensive capabilities? The Quiet Thunder, a deep dive into the Miami Hurricanes' offensive metrics. The Miami Hurricanes wield their bats like a craftsman, not an artist, a blend of skill and utility, but lacking the flair of a masterpiece. Their .258 batting average and .332 on-base percentage reveal a lineup that knows its way around the batter's box, proficient in reaching base but not quite spectacular. The team has demonstrated some muscle with 20 home runs, yet their isolated power of .148 and slugging percentage of .406 suggest they're not the fearsome power hitters one might fear in clutch moments. And let's not overlook those 99 strikeouts, a number that casts a shadow over their 61 walks, indicating a lack of plate discipline that could haunt them in high-leverage situations. In essence, the Hurricanes are like a reliable car that gets you from point A to B but won't turn heads along the way. They have the tools, but do they have the talent to shift into a higher gear? Question 12. How does the pitching staff stack up against divisional and conference competition? The Jekyll and Hyde of the Mound, an analysis of Miami Hurricanes pitching. In the turbulent seas of the ABL, the Miami Hurricanes pitching staff seems to be navigating without a compass. While their ground ball percentage of 51.5% and 111 strikeouts might give the impression of a crew that can steer the ship in crunch time, their earned run average, ERA, of 4.64 and fielding independent pitching, FIP, of 4.19 tell a different story, one of a team that's giving up runs like a leaky faucet. Coupled with 58 walks and 13 home runs allowed, it's clear that this staff is its own worst enemy, practically rolling out the red carpet for opposing batters who boast a .282 average and a .354 on-base percentage against them. These numbers won't strike fear into divisional or conference opponents, rather, they signal vulnerability. If the Hurricanes aim to weather the storm this season, their pitching staff needs to find its true north, and quickly. Question 13. Are the team's fielding statistics a strength or a weakness? The shaky glove, Miami Hurricanes fielding a double-edged sword. The Miami Hurricanes fielding stats are like a puzzle with a few missing pieces, close to complete but lacking in crucial areas. On the positive side, their ability to turn 17 double plays and throw out runners at a 25% clip shows an infield that can navigate tight spots. However, the negatives are glaring, a total zone rating of minus 1.0 and a defensive efficiency of 0.68.2 to a team struggling to convert batted balls into outs consistently. Throw in seven errors and a lone outfield assist, and you've got a defense that's more Swiss cheese than a steel trap. The bottom line? Miami's fielding is less a fortress and more a house of cards, teetering on the edge of collapse. Until these issues are addressed, their glove work remains a liability, not an asset. Question 14. What do base running stats say about the team's tactical approach? Risk without reward, the Miami Hurricanes base running woes. The Miami Hurricanes are getting on base with 112 singles and 61 walks, but their base running strategy is as flawed as a house of cards in a windstorm. A dismal stolen base percentage of 36.4% and seven instances of being caught stealing against just four successful steals paint a picture of a team recklessly squandering opportunities. The weighted stolen bases metric of minus 1.57 further underscores that this isn't merely bad luck, it's bad strategy costing the team valuable runs. In a nutshell, Miami's approach on the base paths is more harebrained than calculated, a tactical failing that could sap momentum and rally opposing teams. Question 15. Who are the standout performers in batting, and what do their stats reveal? The luminaries of Miami's lineup, a tale of three bats. The Miami Hurricanes boast a trio of standout batters making noise in the league. 
At the zenith is catcher Jorge Suarez, a 26-year-old hitting marvel with a sky-high WRC plus of 168.63 and a war of 0 0.93. His stats are not just good, they're Herculean, almost single-handedly impacting the team's win-loss record. Jason Bozeman, the left fielder, also 26, holds his own with a WRC plus of 121.84, although his war of 0 0.06 suggests his impact isn't as monumental as Suarez's. Rounding out the trio is the young Alex Moncayo, a 22-year-old right fielder with a WRC plus of 106.27 and a war of 0 0.09. He's a promising talent, albeit with room for refinement. The common thread? Youth and potential, indicating that Miami's batting future looks as bright as a South Beach sunset. Question 16. Who are the key figures in the pitching staff, and how do they influence games? The three pillars of Miami's mound, a steady and veteran craft and risky business. In the realm of the Miami Hurricanes pitching staff, three arms rise above the rest, each bringing a unique blend of experience and style. Leading the charge is 32-year-old Chris Stella, a savvy veteran whose FIP of 3.401 and war of 0.72 hint at untapped potential despite a lackluster ERA and low strikeout rate. Then there's Gil Aguilar, a 29-year-old flamethrower with a FIP of 3.606 and a team-high war of 0.82. He's the guy who can paint the corners or make batters swing for the fences, albeit sometimes at the cost of free passes. Lastly, we have Bill Borden, another seasoned pitcher at 33, with a FIP of 3.940 and a war of 0.49. Borden's forte is control, as seen by his low walk rate but his vulnerability to the long ball could spell trouble in clutch situations. Together, they form a rotation that leans more on guile and contact pitching than overpowering stuff, a precarious balance that places added pressure on an aging defense. Question 17. Who excels in base running and fielding, and how do they impact the game's outcome? The quiet impact of base running and fielding, Miami's silent game changers. In Miami's tactical playbook, the spotlight rarely hits the base paths. Raul Rodriguez, a 34-year-old infield stalwart, stands alone with a 100% stolen base success rate, albeit with only a single steal. This paints a picture of a hurricane squad content to play station-to-station -station baseball, eschewing the risky gambits of base stealing for a more traditional approach. On the flip side, Miami's defense shines with golden luster. Rodriguez is again the focal point, vacuuming up balls at third base with a zone rating of 1.963. He's flanked by second baseman Jose Barajas and center fielder Pete Rick, who sport ZRs of 1.571 and 1.491, respectively, and are error-free to boot. These men are the quiet backbone of Miami's game, transforming potential hits into outs and stifling opponents' rallies before they can ignite. Question 18. What does the team's age demographic reveal about its experience and future potential? Aging gracefully or staring down the clock? Miami's age demographics decoded. In the Miami Hurricanes roster, age is more than just a number, it's a narrative. The Major League team boasts an average age of 29.3 years, revealing a season ensemble particularly evident on the mound, where the average pitcher is nearly 30. This maturity can lend poison clutch moments, yet raises concerns about longevity and susceptibility to injury. Meanwhile, the AAA squad, barely younger with an average age of 29.72, offers little in terms of youthful exuberance. The real fountain of youth is found further down, in double-A and single-A levels, where average ages dip to 26.63 and 24.86, respectively. The younger talent percolating in these lower tiers may well be the future of the franchise. Thus, the Hurricanes find themselves straddling eras, with seasoned veterans above and emerging prospects below. The challenge lies in how seamlessly they can bridge this generational divide. Question 19. Who has had the best batting and pitching games, and what do these performances signify for the team? Masterful moments. Miami's best individual performances illuminate team's potential. In the realm of standout performances, Miami Hurricanes' Isidoro Forticari and Pat Waters wielded the lumber like maestros conducting an orchestra, Forticari's three-hit, for RBI symphony against Tampa Bay and Waters' five RBI opus against Phoenix are the kinds of outings that invigorate a team and solidify a season's narrative. On the mound, Gil Aguilar emerges as the ace with multiple game scores in the high 70s, flanked by Chris Stella and David Victorero, who aren't far behind. 
These individual exploits aren't mere flashes in the pan. They are emblematic of Miami's dual strength in hitting and pitching, heralding a squad equipped to venture deep into the postseason. Question 20. What does your gut tell you about this team in the 1981 championship season and the Grand Tournament of Champions? Gut check time. Miami Hurricanes 1981 championship season and G2C aspirations. In the swirling cauldron of the 1981 championship season, the Miami Hurricanes are perched on a precipice, the razor's edge between playoff glory and also ran obscurity. With a season roster averaging 29.3 years and playoff odds teetering in the mid-20s, they're a bubble team poised for a breakout or a breakdown. The deciding factors could well be a key series or a singular game that propels them into the grand tournament of champions, G2C. Should they claw their way into the postseason, their seasoned talent like Ace Gil Aguilar could be their North Star. However, the specter of a disgruntled fan base looms large, ratcheting up the pressure in what promises to be a do-or-die scenario. In some, the Hurricanes have the ingredients for a postseason spectacle, but the recipe for success is fraught with variables and volatile elements. Question 21. What is the team's history in the Grand Tournament of Champions? The unmatched legacy, Miami Hurricanes and the decade of G2C. In a decade that has seen nine different grand champions, the Miami Hurricanes stand alone at the pinnacle with two titles to their name. Their G2C journey is a roller coaster of euphoria and despair. Initial playoff appearances in 72 and 73 ended in divisional losses, but 74 brought the ultimate glory, a grand championship. After a post-title stumble in 75, they roared back to clinch a second grand championship in 78. However, the 79 season ended in a disheartening sweep. Overall, with two grand championships, multiple divisional and conference series appearances, the Hurricanes have set a standard that no other franchise has matched in this 10th season of 1981. Their storied past either looms as an inspiring legacy or a heavy burden as they navigate the current season. Question 22. What is the team's history in previous seasons? The Miami Hurricanes, a decade on the diamond. From the inaugural season in 72 to the current campaign in 81, the Miami Hurricanes have been a study in contrasts. They've touched the zenith with 101 wins in 75 and two grand championships, 74, 78, only to plummet to 73 wins in 80. While they've made six playoff appearances, they've also missed the cut thrice, including last year. Financially, they've seen over 2 million fans flock to the stadium in 79, but have also grappled with a bloated $7.1 million payroll during a losing season. Pitching has been their mercurial ally, shining in 78 with a 3.11 ERA, but betraying them with a 4.64 ERA this season. Batting, too, has been a roller coaster, peaking at a .268 average in their first season and dipping to .228 in 78. Their financial balance has swung from a robust $5.3 million in 79 to a paltry $457,000 in 76. In sum, the Hurricanes are a franchise teetering between past glory and an uncertain future, making the 1981 season a pivotal chapter in their storied history. Question 23. What's your take on last season? The 1980 Miami Hurricanes, a symphony of missteps. In the annals of Miami Hurricanes history, 1980 stands as a glaring question mark, a season rife with contradictions. Despite a record payroll of over $7 million, the team stumbled to a dismal 73-89 record, a stark decline from their playoff-worthy 92-70 performance in 79. This freefall was reflected in the stands, with attendance dropping by over 100,000 fans. The on-field stats were no less forgiving, a lackluster .231 batting average and a swollen 3.94 ERA. Even the team's bobbit at .285 suggested the ball simply wasn't bouncing their way. Yet, they managed to keep almost $4 million in the balance, a small consolation in a year that likely left fans and the front office alike questioning the franchise's direction. The 1980 season was less a stumble and more a flat-out nosedive, setting the stage for what would become a pivotal 1981 season, a potential crossroads between resurgence and prolonged mediocrity. Question 24. How does what happened in the 1980 season reflect on the 1981 early campaign? The 1981 Miami Hurricanes, rising from the ashes or burning out? The scars of the 1980 season loom large over the Miami Hurricanes as they embark on their 1981 campaign. With a dismal 73-89 record last year, the squad carries not just a weight of expectation but a burden of proof. The front office finds itself under the microscope, its every decision now a referendum on the franchise's trajectory. It's not just about numbers, it's about psyche, team chemistry, and public faith. 
Fans, once the team's steadfast backbone, now hinge their loyalty on early season performance, making every game a potential pivot point for the franchise. The manager's seat has never been hotter, and the tactics deployed in the early going will either vindicate or vilify him. Team chemistry, newly infused with fresh faces, faces a trial by fire, as does the existing roster, still smarting from last year's debacle. Question 25. What is your take on the current roster? The 1981 Miami Hurricanes, a team on the brink. In the wake of a 1980 season best left in the rearview mirror, the Miami Hurricanes enter 1981 with a roster that sends mixed signals. Starting pitchers Gil Aguilar and Bill Borden hold promise, but Joe Good's unsettling 6.86 ERA is a warning klaxon for the rotation. The bullpen, anchored by Eric Bean's spotless record, is closer, falters in middle relief, suggesting late game security could be a mirage. On the offensive front, catcher Jorge Suarez emerges as the linchpin, boasting a .362 average and a respectable OBP of .422 while first baseman Pat Waters shows power but needs to elevate his .250 average, third baseman Raul Rodriguez is a slump personified with a woeful .179 at the plate. Outfielder Jason Bozeman's .317 average is a bright spot, but the lineup as a whole struggles against right-handed pitching. Injuries to pitcher Omar Garcia and infielders Jalen Smith and Isaac Jones further strain a roster already grappling with depth issues. In sum, the 1981 Hurricanes appear to be a team on a precarious ledge, capable of soaring or plummeting, with little room for error. Well, there you have it, your up-close and personal deep dive into the Miami Hurricanes. We've dissected their strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. We've peeked into the owner's suite, dug into the dugout, and even scoped out the fans in the bleachers. And let me tell you, what a ride it's been. Like a well-pitched game, we've covered all the bases. But remember, baseball is a game of unpredictability. Just when you think you've got it figured out, it throws you a curveball. Ah, the Miami Hurricanes, a team that's tasted both the nectar of championship glory and the bitter pill of first-round exits. With two grand championships and six playoff appearances, they're a study in extremes. Will they reclaim their championship luster, or are we headed for yet another painful first-round farewell? The hurricane's tale is far from over, and the next chapter promises to be a page-turner. Big Earl here, folks. Keep your eyes peeled for future reports as we navigate through the twists and turns of another gripping ABL season. So, whether you're a diehard Canes fan or just love the game, the best is yet to come. Until next time. This is the game.